my name is Emily Parsons. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I specialize in the pelvic core in prenatal and postpartum women. And I'm here to talk to you about how to protect your pelvic core postpartum. There are huge systemic changes that occur during, in your body during pregnancy, during labor and delivery, and during the postpartum period. Um, and there's a lot of research that shows that things that change don't go back to the normal way by themselves. So I wanna make sure that you stay healthy in your postpartum period or your four, fourth trimester. Um, the pelvic core is from your hips to here. So it's your thoracic rib cage, your ribs, your belly, your back, your pelvis, and your hips. Um, this is your pelvis. This, this is your pelvic ring. Um, you have lower lumbar vertebrae, sacrum, tailbone, these are your ilia and your pubic bone, and they, these are my two hip bones. The importance of this muscle group is that this is your pelvic floor. So this is your superficial pelvic floor. It has sphincteric control of the anus, vagina, and urethra, and it helps with clitoral orgasms. This is your deep pelvic floor. It helps support these three organs over here, your colon, your uterus, and your bladder. And it also helps lock out this pelvic ring so you have a stable base. Okay, so your pelvic core muscles get inhibited during your third trimester. And with a cesarean or a vaginal birth, they might also stay off. That's your pelvic floor and your transverse abdominis. So if this is my pelvic core, this is my diaphragm, this is my transverse abdominis, so my deepest pelvic floor muscle, pelvic core muscle in my belly, pelvic floor. So what happens, what's supposed to happen, this is your anticipatory core. It is supposed to compress down like a cylinder to give you this stable core prior to all movements. Tapping my toes, doing jazz hands, lifting my baby, lifting that 80 pound concrete bag. The amount of pelvic core contraction or compression of the cylinder is directly related to how much movement I'm doing. So if I'm just doing a sit to stand, there should be a little squeeze of the cylinder. If I'm picking up an 80 pound concrete bag, then I have a max compression of my cylinder. What happens is, and this is a balloon, so I can't do a real cylinder. It's, a it's supposed to compress down. What happens postpartum, we have all of our vaginal tissue, the tissue in the pelvic floor gets stretched and inhibited. So what happens is a lot of times if I cough, sneeze, or I go to pick up my baby, instead of the pelvic floor squeezing, you have an effect like this. You see that? And it's that downward bulge of the pelvic floor. So what I want you to identify is I want you to find your pelvic floor and start contracting the pelvic floor prior to movement. The pelvic floor is, again, these muscles. It's the muscles that you use to stop the flow of urine. It's the muscles that contract during an orgasm. When you think of contracting your pelvic floor muscles, if this is my vaginal tissue, you think about squeezing the vaginal tissue and then pulling it up onto, into your body. So a correct Kegel is you inhale, when you inhale, this pelvic floor, this balloon opens and it relaxes. And then as you exhale, it rebounds into your, back into your body. So as you're starting to find your Kegel muscles, I want you to inhale, relax your pelvic floor muscles. Exhale, squeeze and try to pull them up into your body. You want to be able to hold that for 10 seconds. It's normal not to be able to hold that for 10 seconds postpartum, whether it's a cesarean or a vaginal birth, but that's something that you're working up to. You want to find those muscles and use them. About 120 contractions per day. So I usually say three times a day or when breastfeeding, just do your really great Kegels. You're gonna do one second Kegels where you pull up, hold, and release just with your breath. Those are your fast twitch muscles. And then you start going for your long endurance where you can hold them for 10 seconds. So if you do those for about 60 times per day during breastfeeding, those are your exercises. And then I want you to link it with function as in every time I sit to stand, I contract my Kegel. Every time I pick up my baby, I contract my Kegel. So the pelvic floor is one of your anticipatory cores, and then the transverse abdominis is your belly muscle that's the anticipatory core. So I'm going to stand up and we're going to show you how to find that. So to find your transverse abdominis, you put your fingers inside your hip, hip bones or whatever you guys call these, the ASISs right here, and you should feel a little bit of a squeeze. So if you look at my belly, this is all my belly muscles off. 
I relax down. That's all four of my belly muscles on if I squeeze. If I just do my transverse abdominis, they're called the tight jean muscles. So you should see a lift right here. So you can see that's flat and then lifted and then out, flat and lifted. So that's my tight jean muscles. So when women have what's called like the mama pooch or the mama baby belly postpartum, it's because they don't have transverse abdominis. They haven't turned back on. And other than we don't like that for vanity reasons, it also means that one of their anticipatory core is off and you have high risk of injury in the pelvic floor. So postpartum, you're gonna find your pelvic floor, transverse abdominis, and turn those on prior to movement.